Hi there and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. For some time now I've been looking at ways in which I could set up a fully automated dark and cold state startup sequence in X-Plane for any basic default aircraft as well as the more complex EBO 737-800, the Airbus A330 or anything else you could think of. I actually did something like this um, a long time ago, both for the Zebo 737 and the Les Saab 340A, where all of the sequence instructions were based on keyboard commands being sent to X-Plane 11, as it was at the time, via touch portal. This time, however, I don't want to use keyboard commands or touch portal, and I don't want to use HID devices either. Basically, the plan is to write one Arduino sketch code detailing the event sequences required and one physical push button connected to a Mega 2560 microcontroller that will trigger the sequence to start. To facilitate the code programming, I will be incorporating the new X-Plane Pro plugin, which comes from the developer Curiosity Workshop in the United States. And in fact, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank Michael at uh, Curiosity Workshop for all of the assistance he provided in order for me to get this project off the ground. Anyway, it's early days for me as far as this type of fully automated event sequencing goes. So as far as this short video today is concerned, I'm just going to use a Cessna 172 Skyhawk for demonstration purposes and I'll set up a cold and dark state uh, startup sequence simply to give you an idea of the potential of this stuff in future which I think is going to be enormous. Now I'm fully aware of course that X-Plane 12 has a pre-assignable full engine startup sequence already for various types of aircraft which is something I've actually used myself from time to time. However whilst this is fine for what it is I wanted something that I had complete and utter control over in terms of the events being used and their timing and I also wanted to have the flexibility to develop things further for the purposes of creating event sequences with far more complexity than simply starting up a basic Cessna Skyhawk. Just imagine for example what you could do with this in a Zebo 737. Okay so getting back to today's exercise this is the event sequence that I'll be working with and for the purposes of the video, I will be slowing the process down slightly by putting a two second delay in between each event, thus giving you a better chance to register everything that happens when I show you the sequence running in the flight simulator. Before that though, I just want to run through the Arduino sketch code that's going to be responsible for making all of this work, which in itself is quite advanced and not something that you would have seen previously. I also wanted to show you this, which is the list of all of the data refs and commands that I've used in the sketch code that will register with X-Plane when an aircraft is loaded and a flight session commences. Just for information, I found all of these uh, data refs and commands using the X-Plane data ref editing tool, which you can download for free should you need it. In any event though, I will actually leave details of these data refs and commands for you to download uh, directly from my own Google Drive folder, should you wish to have a go at this sort of thing yourselves. Okay, so going back to the Arduino sketch code, here it is, or at least the start of it. And as we go through this, you'll see that things look a bit different from usual. And that's because, as far as I know anyway, no one has ever done anything like this before and also put an, an explanation of it in a YouTube video. Anyway, bear with me and uh, let's crack on with the first part, which is simple enough, and that's the requirement for two libraries, one being the Arduino.h library, which comes with the Arduino IDE software by default, and the other being the Xplane Pro.h library, which you can download for free from the developer's Patreon page, i.e. that being uh, Curiosity Workshop. So the next thing we need to do is to assign our push button to a suitable pin terminal on the Mega 2560 microcontroller and whilst I've chosen pin 24 for this you could in fact use any pin terminal as long as it can be classed as an input. 
the text uh, in orange here, uh, which is uh, pin underscore trigger, is just an arbitrary description, which means that you could call this whatever you like, as long as you're consistent with its name, should you need to refer to it later in the code. Now we need to create space in the microcontroller's memory for a number of variables. The first is called start time, which is a millisecond timer value, which the code keeps an eye on to make sure that each of the events in our sequence occur when they are supposed to. The remaining variables here are for things like uh, master battery, the generator, uh, light switches, throttle control, and so on. So all the time the code is running, it's watching the data ref values in xplain12 for all of these variables, uh, which as far as the switch type controls are concerned, will either be a zero for off or a one for on. For the throttle and mixture controls, the data ref values could be zero for idle, one for full, or any value in between, such as uh, 0.33, which means that the throttle or mixture is open by one third. For the flaps, it's a similar thing again. For the ignition key and engine crank data ref values, the arrangement is slightly different, and I'll come back to that in a minute. And again, for clarification, all of the variable names used here, as shown in white text, are completely arbitrary and could be called anything just as long as you're consistent with your naming convention if these are referred to later in the code. In the void setup section, most lines of code shown here are required for the Xplain Pro plugin to function correctly, so again, just type this out as shown. The only other line of code here is to declare uh, pin terminal 24 on the Mega 2560 microcontroller as being an input uh, which will also be using the onboard pull-up resistor to negate the need to install a physical resistor in the push-button wiring circuit. Then we come down to the void loop section and the code on line 27 is again functional for the plugin so just type it as shown. On lines 29 and 30, the code is watching to see if the physical push button is being pressed. And if it is, then our event sequence, as shown later on, is activated. If the push button hasn't been pressed, then nothing happens at all. The few bits of code on lines 32 through 35 are again functional for the plugin, so just type these as shown. Next we have the void explain register section and this is where all the variables that I showed you just now are registered with their respective and counterpart data refs in explain 12. The last three lines of code are something different but here we are registering variables with commands in explain 12 and not data refs. All of this code shown here is for the event sequence timer function so if you want to replicate this type of project, then again, just type it as shown. Following that, we have the void sequence process section, which only activates if the physical trigger push button has been pressed. In lines 83 to 95, there are 12 lines of code, with each one being an invent instruction to explain 12. For the first line, i.e. 83, we have uh, the first of these events which is called case 0 which essentially states that after 100 milliseconds or a tenth of a second to you and me after the push button is pressed then set the master battery data ref value to 1 which is on. Then on line 84 we have the next event which is called case 1 which states that after 2 seconds or 200 milliseconds uh, since the push button has been pressed, set the generator switch data ref to 1 or on. Now I'm not going to go through all of these as I'm sure you've got the idea, but just be conscious of the fact that with these particular code arrangements, uh, each event is on a timed schedule from the moment the physical trigger push button has been pressed. So if one event fails for some reason, it won't prevent the remaining events from happening. 
Now before we leave this part, if you take a look at line 95, you'll see it states throttle control uh, dot to F. Now this is obviously different from the events beforehand, and that's because all of those were based on data ref values of on or off, or one and zero. The data ref value for the throttle, however, is based on a numerical ratio between one and zero, i.e. 0 0.2 or 0 0.4 or 0 0.99 and so on. Now to write such numerical ratios into this particular code, uh, 0 0.2 should always be shown as uh, decimal place 2F for Foxtrot, as you can see on the screen. The F denoting that the value is in fact a float. Right, it's not a whole number, it's a number with decimal places. As far as the mixture control is concerned on line 94, I've simply set this to 1 or full as required uh, to start the engine. But if I only needed a uh, part mixture control, then I could set it up as I've just done uh, for the throttle. So on the previous slide, we saw sequence event 0 to 12. Uh, and now we come to event 13 which has a slightly different format due to the use of commands this time and not data refs. In this case therefore the code states that at 26 seconds after the physical trigger push button has been pressed issue a command to X-Plane 12 to turn the ignition key one place clockwise. Then wait uh, 500 milliseconds or half a second and turn it one place clockwise again and then after another 500 milliseconds, turn the key clockwise once more. Now the ignition key is in position 3, so the rest of this code says, OK, wait another 500 milliseconds and send a command start instruction to crank the engine. Hold this command for one second to give the engine enough time to start, and then send a command end instruction to release the key, which goes back to position 3 by default. So that brings us to the end of the sequence with these two final events. The first of which is to set the flaps to 10% for takeoff. To achieve this in the code, we need to set the flaps data ref variable value to 0.33F, which moves the flaps lever in the aircraft about a third of the way down, which after a bit of faffing about on my part, I found equates to around flaps 10. The last event here is to bring the throttle back to idle and to achieve this I've just set the data ref variable value to zero. Right at the end of the code we have these few lines which basically ends the sequence altogether. Okay so we have a saying here in the UK the proof of the pudding is in the eating uh, which means in this case uh, now that we've written our sketch code Let's test it and see if it works. So I've loaded a Cessna Skyhawk uh, into X-Plane 12 here. Uh, don't worry about that little square. That's just because I haven't got my joystick uh, connected to the PC. So what the event sequence is going to do once I press the uh, push button connected to pin 24 of my Mega 2560 microcontroller, it's going to firstly... Um, switch on the master battery and it's going to switch on the generator or alternator if you prefer then it's going to switch each one of each one of these on in turn fuel pump beacon lights landing lights and so on then it will switch the avionics bus one on then bus two following that it will put the mixture control to full it will then put the throttle control to about 20% then over here it will turn the ignition key one step at a time and then finally uh, we get to the uh, engine crank phase here and then the key will be released uh, to go back to its default position uh, 3 which is uh, uh, titled both here. After that the um, flaps will be set to 10 degrees like this about there and lastly, after a few seconds, the throttle uh, control will be set to idle so that the engine can just warm up. Okay, 
so that's uh, what we're expecting to see. Um, hopefully you can, you've got a good uh, view of everything here to see it all working. Okay, so I'm now going to press my uh, push button, which I call the trigger push button, to start this sequence running. And uh, the whole thing will last about uh, 41 seconds um, as it's been scheduled in the code. So here we go. And the first thing you should see is the master battery switch being operated. Then we go the alternator. Then each of these switches in turn. Two seconds between each one, which I've deliberately slowed down so that you can see what's actually going on here. That's that. Then the avionics buses. Then we go to mixture. Then throttle, 20%. Then the ignition key. Then flaps. And after a few seconds, throttle goes back to idle. And that's it. A very simple automated sequence. But the good thing is that this provides so much potential going forward uh, for all sorts of aircraft. And I can't wait to uh, do something like this in the Zebo 737 or the Airbus A330. Um, unfortunately this only works with X-Plane because we're using the X-Plane Pro plugin. Um, if we had a plugin similar to this for Microsoft 2020 then we might be able to do something there as well. But as we don't have that at the moment um, other than the Touch Portal uh, plugin which I've shown you, I've shown you before uh, we can't really do anything with Arduino, Arduino coding which is a bit of a shame but who knows what's around the corner. Okay, so that's the test, the proof of the pudding, um, and everything seems to work perfectly. Okay, so there we are then. We finally come to the end of this particular video, the subject of which I believe will provide all sorts of new and exciting opportunities going forward. If you want to have a go at something like this yourselves, then to help you, I've put an abridged version of my sketch code into my Google Drive folder for you to download and mess about with. This abridged code version will have a sequence of just three events in it simply to get you started. But with the data refs and commands list that I've also put in my Google Drive folder and reference to the video itself, and I'm sure that you will have the tools to expand the code as you require it. In the meantime though, a big thank you for your continued support of my Fun of Flying channel. And if you're interested in seeing more content in future, please don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button, as this really does help with the old YouTube algorithm. Further, if you have any questions, then please let me know and I'll try and assist you. Best wishes to you all and ta-ta for now.